Hey everybody, you've probably seen this setup before, an ATV, a set of ramps, and a pickup truck, but in a lot of these videos on YouTube, things go very wrong. Well, I'm here to try and change that. In this video, I want to talk to you about loading an ATV into a pickup truck. Today, I've got a Can-Am Outlander Max, and I've got a Chevy Silverado High Country, perfect for demonstrating the proper and safe way to get that machine into your truck so you can go find the trail. So, let's get started. First of all, and this might seem obvious, but hey, it is worth checking. Well, just make sure your machine is gonna fit in your bed. So this is a Silverado High Country with the shortest bed possible. This is the little five and a half foot bed, and that's actually a two up ATV. So marrying these together is pretty funny, but I'm going to prove today that even a long ATV like that can fit into a short bed like this. How do I know that? Well, the wheelbase on the Outlander is 58 inches, and I can bust out my tape measure. That's the easiest way to do this, just to make sure I'm gonna have enough. 58 inches is right there. So if my wheelbase is at the front, yeah, my back wheel is gonna sit right here about where the bed meets the tailgate. Now, overall length on that machine is a hair under eight feet. And I know that this five and a half foot bed with the tailgate down is actually a hair under eight feet. So this thing is gonna fit pretty much perfectly. Now, Chevy between the wheel wells offers 50 inches, which is excellent because this machine is just under 50 inches wide. It should fit right between between the wheel wells. And before we load, I wanna show you some details in the bed, which I think Chevy does better than anyone else. Seriously guys, I think Chevy is doing beds the best right now in the half ton game. And that's one of the main reasons right there. Three tie downs at different heights in every single corner. And you can even see they're on sort of different faces there. So it doesn't matter what you have to tie down, you're definitely going to have a spot. And then those grooves in the bed walls, well, you can fit lumber in there to make basically a tiered bed loading system. Those little plastic caps, those are other holes which are ready to accept more cleats for tying down. So yeah, Chevy really pays attention to its bed. And then you also have LED lighting, you can see right there. And of course, there is an outlet back here in the bed as well. So if you want to plug your stuff in, you can do that. Now, the actual width of the bed is quite impressive too. For this new generation Silverado, Chevy added seven inches of width. That's not between the wells. The wheel wells didn't change. Like I mentioned, that's about 50 inches, but still, this thing offers a ton of space. And you'll see, once I get the ATV in, there's still a lot of space between it and the bed wall where you could cram more stuff. Well, uh, now that's enough about the bed. Let's get loading. So what are you going to need for this process? Well, two things, ramps and straps. Now, I like to use ratchet straps, but regular pressure straps will do. Now, when it comes to actually buying ramps, uh, longer ramps are generally better because that's going to give you a little bit less of an angle. And then I always like to make sure that whatever ramps I get have some type of grooving in them, some kind of grip. Now, just about every ATV ramp I've ever seen does have a grip like this, but you want to make sure that whatever you're getting is going to be sticky, especially here in Canada in the wintertime. Uh, my tires are going to be snowy and icy and I want to make sure they're going to get good traction. And then finally, make sure you get good ramps. Go to an accredited store, get them from a good source so that you're going to be able to trust your ramps. Don't go out to, I don't know, Johnny's secondhand ramps down behind the warehouse. Now it's time to line up. So first of all, you want to park your truck on the most level surface you have around. I'm in my driveway, so we are fairly flat right here. Now second, I like to actually pull my ATV up and then line up the ramps visually. You know, you can really see where the wheel is going to fall on the ramp. And then you want to make sure the ramp is dead straight. So once again, you just drive straight up into the bed. You don't have to worry about turning. Now, the most important point here is hooking up the ramp so that they are solid. Let me show you. Okay, now safety-wise, this is the most important part of the process. You want to take your ratchet strap now, hook one end onto the safety chain hookup for your hitch. That's what I've already done here. And then the other end is going to go onto your ramp. And what you want this doing is pulling down with as much pressure as possible. Now you can see here on my ramps, I have this sort of added bar right here underneath the top layer. I like putting it down there so you don't have to drive over the hook. You also want it to be pretty close to wherever your ramp splits. Usually ramps bend and when it's here in the middle, that means it's going to be pulling down right here to make sure you have good pressure. So then you just tighten up your ratchet, 
Again, everything's lined up here, so you want to make sure your ramp doesn't move during this process. And you want to make sure it's nice and snug. You don't have to go crazy tight, but this is to make sure, and see, look, now I can't even really move it side to side, up or down. This is to make sure that while you are driving on with your ATV, just in case for some reason you got some wheel spin, the ramp's not going to shoot out from under you and leave you high and dry and falling a long way. Now we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So I've got my ratchet strap here. I want to come under here, hook it onto the safety chain hookup, try to make sure all the twists are out of it. Oh, and run. Okay, we're all lined up here, just about ready to go. A few final things. So first of all, start up your ATV. Now, you want it to be in low range. You want this to be as slow and smooth as possible, and that's why you want low. You also want torque out of this machine so it doesn't struggle climbing at all. Now, there's another thing you can do on Can-Ams specifically. This thing has ITC, Intelligent Throttle Control. That's a drive-by-wire system, and it allows me to have drive mode. So I'm gonna use the ITC to go over into work mode. Now in work mode, it's gonna dull the throttle response even more so I can be really, really smooth with it. And that's the name of the game when you're driving up ramps. You wanna be consistent, slow, and steady, and smooth. I'm gonna to try to show you exactly that right now. And for safety's sake, you should always wear a helmet when you load your ATV. I know it seems like a quick little thing, you'll be fine, but for something like this where you could flip off from that many feet up in the air, or the machine could land on you, you should absolutely have your helmet on. So, watch and learn. You also want to make sure the machine is in four-wheel drive. The next point, once you get up, always want to make sure you don't hit the front, especially if your nose is going to collide with your glass up there. But uh, yeah, there it is. Driving up into the truck is as easy as that. But yes, make sure you're careful about how far forward you go, but also make sure your rear wheels are up. But now that I am up, I am just going to go ahead. I like to do it this way. Put the machine in neutral and just push it forward because this machine, it does look like, and it is, the first thing that's going to contact is... Oh, you know what? It's actually the plastic nose or actually the winch right on the back of the bed. So in neutral, I'm able to bring it up just that close. There's about half an inch between the ATV and the front of the bed. And then I can slam my parking brake on and make sure that this thing is solid. And now all you gotta do is tie it down. Keeping your ATV in your truck is real important as well. So at the back, I like to use one of these heavy duty 3,300 pound work straps to make sure that this thing is staying in the truck. Now, not only did I hook it over a solid piece of the frame up here, but it's also making contact with the wheels. And thanks to the Chevy in those three different uh, positions for tie downs, I use the lowest position. So then not only is it pulling forward, but it's also pulling down. And then I'm gonna put one strap over the nose just to put some downward pressure to make sure that if you were to break, it's not gonna ram into the front of your bed all that hard. So let me crank this thing down. And thanks to the width of this Chevy bed, if you want to take your ramps with you, you can actually tuck them down beside your machine and the sidewall of the truck. And that's really useful. Now, you can also usually slide your ramps underneath your machine, but then there's nothing to hold them from sliding out. So if you do that, you better make sure you tie them down. 
and there you go. That is how to load an ATV into a pickup truck. Now guys, this is one of my favorite things about ATVs and trucks. They pair so well together. It's so nice that you don't need to have a trailer. You can simply load your machine into your truck and then hit the road and go find the trail. One less thing to worry about, one less thing to do maintenance on. Having an ATV and a truck is a perfect combination. So guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you go below, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if uh, you load ATVs and trucks, if you do it the same way I do, and most importantly, if you've ever had any mishaps. Uh, luckily, so far, knock on all the wood around, I never have, but you just never know, and that's why you gotta be safe every single time. So, uh, like I said, leave a comment, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to the channel for the latest news views and real world reviews. See ya.